When I originally started this channel, a lot of the videos usually were about some unusual, mysterious or really extreme objects somewhere out there in the universe. And there's this one object I've really been meaning to come back to and talk about in the last few years. The most massive and the brightest star ever discovered anywhere in the universe. The star that we usually refer to as R136A1. Located in a nearby Large Magellanic Cloud, inside what's known as the Tarantula Nebula. And mostly because there have been several papers released in the last few months that essentially use some of the most modern and most detailed observations of this particular region in order to investigate this particular star and a lot of other extreme stars in its vicinity. In the process creating this, the most accurate and the most high resolution image of this iconic star and its neighbors. And it's actually important to understand that, as you can see from this image, it does have quite a lot of massive neighbors as well. As a matter of fact, this is just one of many extremely massive objects in the vicinity, with this image from the Hubble telescope of this region known as R136 sort of showing us a tremendous amount of very powerful, very bright and very young stars. With the R in R136 being the name of the observatory that originally discovered this particular region, the Radcliffe Observatory. But until the Hubble telescope became operational in the 80s, it was actually completely unknown what this region represented. Because this was initially an unresolved stellar object. It was even believed to be some kind of a really massive star, potentially 3000 masses of the Sun. But some of the earlier images from the Hubble Space Telescope allowed the scientists to resolve at least 12 different components inside of this region, eventually leading to the discovery of at least 200 separate very bright stars. And I guess if you were to approach this region, you would most likely look something similar to what you see right here. A tremendous amount, here we're talking about hundreds and actually even thousands of bright objects, within a relatively small volume of space. As a matter of fact, within about 10 light years, there are over 3000 different stars, and a lot of them are really massive. With this entire cluster being approximately 450,000 solar masses, equivalent to a typical global cluster which is what the scientists believe it might become in the future. But more intriguingly, the very powerful, very massive stars inside of this cluster are actually what gives the Tarantula Nebula its incredible shape and incredible color. As a matter of fact, the only reason this nebula even exists is because of these very bright stars. Their ridiculous luminosity and their power illuminates all of the gas in the region, creating this beautiful formation. And by definition, this is what's known as a starburst region. There are quite a lot of really massive, really bright and very young stars. With approximately 200 times more stars located in this region compared to the rest of the galaxy. With this tiny volume containing thousands of times more star matter than anywhere else in the galaxy. So in some sense, this is actually kind of unusual, but unusual for our surf neighborhood. These particular starburst regions have been discovered in other galaxies out there, and specifically in galaxies usually referred to as starburst galaxies. For example, a lot of these exist in the antenna galaxies you see right here that are currently creating these starburst regions because of the collision of galaxies. But intriguingly, this particular region is kind of difficult to explain. It might have formed because of the interaction of the Large Magellanic Cloud with Small Magellanic Cloud, or potentially with the Milky Way galaxy, but it's really not certain how it was created and why. It was created not so long ago though, approximately 2 million years ago. And the reason the scientists believe this is relatively young is because there are not a lot of signs of supernova. As a matter of fact, they've only discovered one runaway star that you see right here that most likely escaped because of the gravitational interaction, not necessarily a supernova explosion. A typical supernova region usually contains more signs of various explosions and a lot more gas. This region also does not contain any red supergiants, or actually a lot of other types of unusual stars, and for the most part simply contains very hot O-class stars that are believed to have been recently created. But the central region here is dominated by several major stars, A1, A2 and A3 being some of the most massive ones. Pretty much all of the stars here are at least a million times brighter than our own sun, with the one known as A1 being the brightest of them all approximately 4.7 million times the brightness. And the star that you see right here has always been believed to be the most massive ever. Initial estimates suggested that it's maybe about 320 masses of the Sun or even more. But the recent calculations suggest that its mass is actually lower. And this is the most accurate observations we have so far, 
yet it still is the most massive star ever found. The most accurate calculation suggests that it's about 196 solar masses and has a temperature of about 46,000 Kelvin. It's also a type of a star known as Wolfraye that we recently discussed in one of the previous videos, right there or in the description below, which means that it's emitting a huge amount of energy. As a matter of fact, it's emitting so much light that it's ionizing everything around it, creating very powerful emissions of light that are usually not visible around other stars. And actually, the photosphere of the star is so hot that it's accelerating the material away from the star, increasing its velocity to over 2,500 km per second, causing the star to have tremendous stellar winds, but also losing a lot of mass in the process. It loses about a billion times more material than our own sun, and it's very likely that it already lost about 35 solar masses in the last 2 million years. But because the star is kind of far away from us, 157,000 light years away, we would not really be able to see it very easily even with a relatively powerful telescope. You might be able to see the R136 cluster, but just not the specific star. And that's why it took Hubble to resolve all of this and to discover all of these properties. Nevertheless, it is an extremely bright star. Just to give you a comparison, if this star was just around the same distance away from us as the nearby Proxima Centauri, which is just over 4 light years away from us, this year would actually have the total brightness of full moon. It would be the second brightest object in the night skies. But if it went supernova near us, then it would most likely cause tremendous damage on the planet too. And that's of course what the scientists believe is going to happen to it at some point. It's going to shrink enough to essentially become really unstable, but because of its tremendous mass and because of its really high temperature, on the inside is going to start experiencing some really unusual effects, where the gamma rays inside the star are actually going to start producing various particle-antiparticle pairs. In other words, the energy inside the star is going to start turning back into mass, and because of this it's going to destabilize the core, eventually leading to what the scientists refer to as pair instability supernova. You can learn more about this concept in one of the videos in the description. Although the actual future of the star is currently unknown, simply because we don't actually have any other examples to compare this to. This is such a unique object that it's just impossible to predict both its history and of course its future. All of the modern predictions are just based on the understanding from the physics of other stars. But I guess what's really intriguing is of course the fact that there are so many other really massive really bright stars in its vicinity. For example, its nearby partner A2 is around 5000 astronomical units away from A1. In other words, they are technically inside each other's star systems. But there are other objects nearby that are even hotter and contain almost as much mass as well. So as you can see from this table, there are quite a lot of these really massive very bright stars in the vicinity, with A1 being just a little bit more bright and a little bit hotter. But I guess more intriguingly, the most recent investigation discovered yet another partner much closer, something that was previously invisible in the images produced by Hubble. The most recent observations discovered that there is a much dimmer partner very very close to A1 that seems to be some kind of an O-type star about 2000 astronomical units away from A1. This would be a much dimmer and a much smaller star, but still much brighter than our own sun, with several other objects discovered in the vicinity as well, and several other stars that were previously invisible, and once again many of them very powerful O-type stars, but obviously appearing much dimmer because of the distances and also because there are just so many bright stars that tend to outshine everything else. And actually some of the previous estimates for its mass might have gotten the mass wrong because of that other star. From this distance, the R136A1 might have just appeared as one single object, but in reality it was two. And so if you were to subtract the other star from its total brightness, it might appear a little bit less bright. Although nevertheless, still the brightest object out there and still the most massive. 196 solar masses, 4.7 million luminosity of our sun. And naturally, because I'm using Space Engine, I kind of wanted to see what all this would look like from a random planet located in this region. What would the night skies be like if you were to stand on some random planet here and see all of these stars in their glory? Well, actually, depending on the distance to some of the brighter stars, it might be completely overwhelming. But from a slightly farther away distance, it looks like this. It appears as hundreds and hundreds of different bright stars in the night skies, with the total luminosity here very likely making the nights on this planet much brighter than the nights on planet Earth. 
but obviously these planets very likely don't exist, mostly because these are very very young stars. And if they do exist, they will not exist for very long, mostly because these stars are going to all go supernova at some point, and if one happens relatively close to this planet, it might completely destroy everything on the surface and the planet itself as well. Nevertheless, it looks pretty cool. But I guess on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention for now. There have been quite a lot of studies of this region, but I think until future observations with the James Webb telescope, we're not going to learn much more. Hubble telescope has officially reached its limit, and so any new discoveries are going to be coming from new telescopes. And so until we discover something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description, which now also features James Webb Telescope. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.